Hey what's up everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be diving into the speedy light machine gun that came out of Season 4's initial update, and the top builds to take it from bare and plain, to majestic and gold in the fastest most painless way possible. Let's jump in and take a look at the UGM-8. Just like the recently reviewed Marco 5 that was also part of the season's initial release, the UGM-8 has a blueprint in the premium battle pass that allows you to unlock it just a smidge earlier than we're accustomed. This gun unlocked at 31 is able to be unlocked earlier at level 24 with the Beach Coral blueprint. Just a heads up though, this blueprint is some kind of cursed hipfire type of build that I can't recommend to anyone, but it is a teaser to something similar that we'll have to use down the road in a later challenge. Use the blueprint to get an early start if you're able, but if you can't, just know that you're not really missing much gameplay-wise. Starting off with the challenges, we'll once again be going into hardcore game modes as they're the absolute best for completing camo tiers, especially ones that use or require lower damage attachments. There will be a few that we will be skipping as they will autocomplete with no problem by the time the camo grind is finished. These will be the 400 eliminations, 50 headshots, 50 multi kills, 30 bloodthirsties, and 100 close range kills. Now in the off chance you have a few bloodthirsty stragglers left, a bit later I will include a couple level 70 builds I use for general play that you can use to finish them off if needed. As is the case with most of the gold weapon guides I've done so far, the Deadeye challenge will be starting us off as the first challenge that is best completed with a specific build in mind. Now this was surprising to me because it's the first time in a while that a long distance build was able to be made at a relatively early level. The early unlock of the 3-6x scope is greatly appreciated as it's been invaluable to me in terms of visibility on traditional maps. And the stock also provides some much needed initial accuracy which is great for any engagement, but especially those at range. Add in the speed boost to walking speed and you have a nice little thrown in bonus there as well. Now normally I would go with the stifled grip here for more initial accuracy and centering speed, but I wanted just a touch more ADS speed, so I chose the leather grip in its place to round it out. This next challenge is for sure the grindiest of the entire bunch. You need to get 100 bullet penetration kills to complete the Wildcat tier. Now I'm going to show you my build here that I use, but just know that it's a level 70 build and that I saved this one for absolute last. My reasoning was that I could potentially pick up some of them during the restrictive camo challenges as well as saving me some time in the process. After all, we are all about efficiency aren't we? As far as the build goes, I was going to put all attachments into penetration, but remember the supposed cap of it that's mentioned in the stats page. Now not knowing if this cap is true or not, I just assumed it was and changed the magazine to lower caliber ammunition. The faster fire rate seemed better to me anyways. Make sure to throw on Pearson Vision and go ham shooting through those walls. Moving on, starting us off with the restrictive attachment challenges is Survivalist, which has to get 100 kills without taking damage from that enemy with the MX Silencer, Romuald 560mm DA barrel, and the Bernard Forte 7 stock equipped. For the third weapon in a row, they want us to use a burst barrel. I'm not a fan of them in close range scenarios even on SMGs, so on a LMG it's a for sure no go for me on ship house. I personally took this to traditional maps where it was much more manageable. I used a 6.5mm Securas and the heavy foregrip to help with the ranged accuracy and gung ho to be able to get my shot off practically immediately even after a sprint. Getting into the next challenge is Mind Games, which has you get 100 hipfire kills with the Mercy Airport 635mm barrel, remove stock, and the 6.5mm secure 125 round mags equipped. Two of the three attachments here are part of that scuff blueprint build I mentioned earlier. The only thing that's missing is the mags. Thankfully Gung Ho wasn't limited in this challenge as it made it a cakewalk. You pretty much just need to run around Shipment or Das House, hipfire and add anything in your way. And what's funny is that it's kind of actually fun. There's no way I would use it competitively like this, but for grinding out a camo tier, it's actually not too bad. Everything is specced out into hipfire actually, as it should be, and you'll knock this out in no time. Finishing off the restrictive attachment challenges is Death Artist, which has to get 100 ADS kills with the Bernard XL214 736mm barrel, Bernard Forte 7 stock, and the 303 British 50 round fast mags equipped. I used traditional maps again for the most part of this challenge because the barrel and fast mags, even being pretty good at what they do, were putting me in poor positions where I had a hard time getting my shot off first. And that's with Gung Ho also equipped which is just crazy to me. These restrictive attachments and the build that surrounds it are much better when you have some space in between you and the enemy, so going into regular maps in my opinion just made sense. After making this change, the kills once again just flew by. As I put up the general play builds I have grown to like with the weapon for you to check and try out. Let me know in the comments below if there are any prior base guns you'd like to see that I haven't covered yet. I plan on making these guides for every future release gun here in Vanguard, but often wonder if I missed something substantial that should have been covered. If you missed some of the other guides, I just happen to have a playlist right here that you can take a look at at your leisure. Other than that, take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Later.